Hey guys, today we are going to find determinants and inverse of matrices. So we'll start with determinants. First of all, uh, something we need to know about a determinant is it must come from a square matrix. Okay, well, a square matrix, what that means is a matrix that's maybe two by two, three by three, whatever the number of rows is, is the same number of columns. Okay, so that is a square matrix. Okay, the matrix is used as the denominator in the inverse matrix. So what we do here, learning to find a determinant, will help us find the inverse of a matrix. So given matrix A, there's two ways we can be asked for the determinant. One, it can look like this. Determinant and then the matrix. So this is asking us to find the determinant. Another way that you can be asked for a determinant would look like this. Notice the difference, there's these brackets here. We don't have that little horizontal part. So either saying DET for determinant and then the matrix or just giving these vertical uh, brackets without the horizontal parts also says find the determinant of that matrix. Okay, second order determinant. So finding the determinant of a two by two matrix. Okay, so when we find the two, the determinant of a two by two matrix, we do the main diagonal product, A1 times B2, minus the secondary diagonal product. Okay, that first diagonal product is positive, the second diagonal product is negative. So you've got positive, then negative. So we'll find the determinant of this matrix. We've got seven times five, and that's the positive one. That's the main diagonal. Then the secondary diagonal will be negative, three times four. So that's 35 minus 12, which is 23. Okay, and here's the other notation. So we have the DET notation, and here we've just got the vertical pieces without the horizontal. It's just asking for a determinant again. The main diagonal, four times five, that's positive. The secondary diagonal is negative, negative two times three. So that's 20 minus negative six. So that determinant is 26. Okay, we'll do a third order, and this is the highest one that we'll do. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated. So we still follow that pattern of positive, negative, but there's a third column now, positive, negative, positive. Okay, so what we do first is this first element in the top row multiplied by the determinant from this matrix. So we start in the first row, then we find the determinant of the matrix in the next two rows. Okay, And then we move over to the next column, and we use this, and we use, then we multiply that by the matrix from these two outer columns. And then we move over to this third column and we multiply that by the matrix made from these other two columns. So whatever column you're in in the top row, you're using the other two columns in the bottom two rows. Okay, so here we go. Seven, and this one is positive, then negative, then positive. So we've got positive seven times the matrix from these two rows down here. So the bottom rows and bottom columns, or bottom rows in the right two columns. So we've got the main diagonal, negative one times negative three, 
minus 6 times 2. Okay, so then we move over to the next. I'm just going to change colors here. Get that. Okay, so I'm going to use that number. So it's minus, because that's a negative one, negative five times, and then I use the determinant from these outer two rows. Three times negative three minus negative two times two. Okay, and then I'm going to move over to here. Forgot to close that bracket. Okay, so we're in a positive one, so plus three times the determinant from this matrix. So I've got main diagonal of three times six minus the secondary diagonal, negative two times negative one. A lot of times people set these up and still make mistakes in their calculations, so we need to be careful as we calculate this. Okay, so we have 7 times 3 minus 12 minus negative 5 times negative 9 minus negative 4, so that's plus 4, plus 3 times 18, minus, and then negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Okay, so that's 7 times negative 9, so we get negative 63, minus and we've got negative 5 times, and then negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5, so negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, then plus 3 times 16, which is 48. So negative 63 minus 25 plus 48, and that is negative 40. So the determinant of that matrix is negative 40. Okay, so we'll try another one. So we start with negative 8, and we use the matrix down here. So we've got negative 8 times, and this time we'll just skip ahead a step. So we've got negative 30. So instead of writing what we're multiplying, we're just going to multiply it. And 1 times negative 1, so it's minus negative 1. Okay, so that was the positive, now negative then positive. So 2, and then we're going to use the two outer columns. So 2 times 4 times 5 is 20, minus negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Okay, then we're in a positive column. 7 times, and then we use these two rows away from that 7. 4 times 1, minus negative 3 times negative 6, which is 18. Okay, if we put all that together, so we've got negative 8 times uh, negative 29 minus 2 times 17 plus 7 times negative 14, that will give us 100. Okay, inverse. The inverse of a matrix. Okay, so given a matrix and knowing that its determinant does not equal zero, 
Then the inverse, which is notated like this, so this a negative 1 means inverse, is 1 over the determinant times, so this is going to be scalar multiplication, and it's our original matrix except these got switched on the main diagonal, and on the secondary diagonal, their signs became opposite. Okay, so the first thing we have to do in order to find an inverse is first find the determinant. So the determinant of a second order, we've got negative 3 times 7 minus negative 8 times 2. Main diagonal minus secondary diagonal. Okay, so that's negative 21 minus negative 16, and that is negative 5. So the determinant is negative 5. Okay, so now that I have found the determinant, I can find the inverse. So the reciprocal of the determinant is 1 over negative 5, and I multiply that by our matrix, except I switch the main diagonal, so 7 and negative 3 switch places, and the secondary diagonal gets opposite signs, 8 and negative 2. Okay, and now I do scalar multiplication, negative 1 fifth times 7 is negative 7 fifths. Negative 1 fifth times negative 2 is positive 2 fifths. Negative 1 fifth times 8 is negative 8 fifths. And negative 1 fifth times 3 times negative 3 is positive 3 fifths. So this is the inverse matrix. Okay, so let's try another one. First, uh, in order to find the inverse, we must find the determinant. So the determinant is found by doing the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the secondary diagonal. Okay, so that's 30 minus 12. So the determinant is 18. Okay, so now I use the reciprocal of the determinant, 1 over 18, and multiply that as a scale factor by this matrix with the main diagonal switched, so the 5 and 6 switch places, and opposite signs on the secondary diagonal, negative 3 and negative 4. So I've got 1 18th times 6, so that's 6 18ths, and that simplifies to 1 third. Okay, negative 4 eighteenths, so that's going to be negative, and 4 eighteenths is 2 ninths. Negative 3 eighteenths, and 3 eighteenths is 1 sixth, and 5 eighteenths, and that does not simplify. So that is the inverse of the matrix. All right, a, an identity matrix is a square matrix with one along the di main diagonal, zeros elsewhere. So an identity matrix, say, in a 3x3 three three would look like this. Main diagonal is 1, everything else is zeros. You can have that in any size square matrix. Okay, so when you multiply an inverse a matrix by its own inverse, that actually gives you an identity matrix. So the matrices here, 5, 4, 3, 6, uh, that's the same one from above right here. We're multiplying it by its inverse, 1 third, negative 2 ninths, negative 1 sixth, and 5 eighteenths. So if I went through the multiplication on this, I would end up finding that my product is this, 1, 0, 0, 1. I'm multiplying by an inverse. Just like if I multiply a number like 5 by its reciprocal, I would get 1. Okay, so what this is, when you multiply a matrix by its inverse, it's essentially multiplying a number by its reciprocal. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you get 1. When you multiply a matrix by its inverse, you get an identity matrix. 
so essentially the identity matrix is to matrices what one is to other numbers in multiplication okay it is the multiplicative inverse uh, that gives you the identity matrix one is the multiplicative multiplicative inverse five times its reciprocal is one okay if i was to multiply this matrix by an identity matrix five times one is five four times zero is zero five plus zero okay next column five times zero is zero four times one is four zero plus four next row three times one plus six times zero is three and three times zero plus six times one is six so multiplying a matrix by a by an identity matrix is the same as multiplying a number by one five times one is five okay so when you multiply any number by one you get that same number when you multiply a matrix by an identity matrix it's essentially multiplying by one you get the same matrix